Welcome to the L.E. mine. This is one of the coolest mines you'll ever see. It's got a huge nightclub and all kinds of artifacts. And hop on the train. Let's go in there and have a look. We ride a train underground there. The nightclub's only open one day a week. And Friday nights we went in there. So yeah, it takes about 5-10 minutes to go all the way in there. And that's the only way to get in there. It's a half mile under the city of Zacatecas. <laughs> Here's the, the low key for this mine. Yeah. That's where we're heading. Some of the fossils and stuff that they have here. some of the fossils that they got out of this mine. Oh, just awesome. Crystals. Those are thunder eggs, I think. Just incredible fossils. We're going to give you a bit of a tour of just some of these fossils and uh, rocks and minerals they have here. Um, they're actually from all over the world, and it's a very impressive collection. We're just kind of showing you some of the highlights here. Look at this. Uh, this is just fascinating. Um, some of these formations and eggs and crystals. Uh, it's quite a collection. It's kind of hard to um, video them. Those I got some of those are just little mud and salt balls and a whole bunch of different crystals. Um, just fascinating. Uh, one cool thing about Zacatecas is uh, it's a pretty big city and uh, they have all kinds of shops that sell uh, all kinds of these different uh, rocks and minerals and uh, for actually a pretty cheap price. So uh, if you're into mining and stuff, that is a really cool place in Mexico to go. Uh, the only bad thing about it, it's up 9,000 feet, so it's not hot up there. Look at these crystals and the colors. So, uh, so you get up there and uh, one morning I actually had to scrape a little bit of ice off the the windshield of my car up there so it gets a little cool overnight but uh you know usually by 10 o'clock or something it's comfortable in a t-shirt although there's quite a few mexicans tourists there you see them uh in a parka and uh, scarves and everything all day long <laughs> kind of funny to see when you know it's warm enough to be wearing a t-shirt but anyhow so yeah it's just a, a, just uh, trying to give you a little bit of a highlight just an excellent job that they've done displaying all these uh all these rocks and they're all labeled and quite a few of them are from Zacatecas and places in Mexico, but they are uh, not all, uh, some of them for other places in the world. And look at this, it just looks like ice. It's a salt, I don't know what that is, but it's just stunning. It looks clear as ice. If you've seen it anywhere, you would think it was ice, but uh, obviously it's not. Uh, just a, a real treat. To, uh, wasn't something I was expecting uh, going into a mine, seeing such an extensive collection of, of uh, crystals and, and rocks and minerals from uh, really all over the world. Um, you know, Zacatecas and, and this mine is just a, like I say, just a fascinating place to visit. So um, we're, they were really nice to us too. Uh, we, we went there and explained uh, about my channel and what I was doing there and uh, just let us go wherever we wanted. So see that concrete floor here that's perfectly smooth so it's wheelchair accessible. So um, it's uh, there's no problem that kind of moving through there. It's actually quite dark in there. You know, your eyes get used to it. I was lucky I brought lots of lights with me so I was able to film uh, fairly well, but... Uh, you really can't see that well if uh, if you don't have light with that my my Fenix lights with me so luckily we've seen a little bit of glare on the cases but uh, other than that it seemed to turn out pretty good and then we come back for the nightclub so here's some of the mining artifacts here there's uh looks like it was part of an air tank that was uh riveted together and there's a set of bellows same as i have for my uh, forge and some of these old helmets um similar to what i have actually a lot of this stuff i have in my museum at home and uh, there's a Jim Crow there behind the helmets, and that's for bending track. And there's some ladles uh, for the smelter to pour the stuff out, and uh, some wrenches, and there is a uh, a tool there to crush stuff up. There's a, this is a mucker. This is a, I haven't seen one of these before. It's a Gardner Denver mucker, so it come out of the states, but uh, pretty cool mucker. It's not uh, the type that I 
I've normally ever seen before. And just uh, they got all kinds of really cool lamps, a whole bunch of carbide lamps and display of uh, of different ladles. And we're uh, we're gonna follow the tour back into the mine here. All right, we're just gonna follow the tour here. We're going from where the train comes into the station. This is where the nightclub is. We'll uh, come here tonight and check it out. The gates are locked right now, so you can't get in there. We'll go in there and have a few brewskis in the <laughs> in the mine nightclub. Just in behind all this, behind the tour, so it's not as chatty. And it's got a, a bit of a mock up here. There's a hand steel there. And uh, this looks kind of like an interesting drill. It's not one that I uh, am familiar with. Maybe um, a Spanish drill or something, or a Mexican drill. Um, see, lots of carbide lamps, and it's similar to the ones we have. This, but not uh, none that they were on the headlamps or on the hardheads. So we're gonna continue along. I guess they probably lock these gates at night so people from the nightclub don't wander off <laughs> into other parts of the mine. Yeah. I wonder just how extensive this mine really is. My tour guide's a real nice guy. He actually gave me some directions to some other mines I can go explore. All right, so we just got a bit of a winds here. They've got it barricaded off. So no one falls down there. So goes well, fair ways down, probably about 50 feet down. So it's wet down there, flooded level down there. No, they didn't let me go down there. <laughs> I didn't even ask. So. He's taken quite a long time to explain uh, stories of mining and stuff in Spanish, of course. So, uh, first of all, I don't think he's going to tell me anything I don't already know. Second of all, I can't understand a word he's saying. <laughs> We're just going to hang back here a little bit, and so uh, you don't have to hear the chatter. Uh, looks like the banker is taking his cut here or something. And there's an old, uh, looks like part of a cable, probably part of, um, oh, there you go. Looks like there's a bucket there, and that was probably the wheel, the pulley at the top of the shaft for the ore bucket, an old one. So you got a pretty fair-sized stope in here. Goes up uh, a good 50 feet, and there's some platforms up there. Obviously, of a little newer construction. <laughs> and everything's pretty solid in here. I could climb up there, but I'm sure they wouldn't be happy. The tour guy's real nice. He told me where some other mines are, so. I don't see any Marcellos in here, which is bats in Spanish. There's a couple dummies up there. The ladder going up to a bit of a raise. I don't mind climbing up there, but I guess that ain't gonna happen. Mm. Mm. 
pensado que los resultados se caían en el gran cantidad de accidentes de hombres dentro de la mina. En promedio morían muchos. Oh, there's some explosive boxes. Llegaban a trabajar hasta 1200. Mexican ones. Pelagroso, that must be the Spanish word for explosives. Pressing ladders that they mocked up here. I guess that was maybe a real simple way to make a ladder. I never seen anything like that before. So you can just uh, climb up there with that. And they built the big. There's another little display there. A sack of ore and a pulley. Leading that sack down. And then uh, below us, looking down into the stope. And uh, yeah, it continues on down. A little hard to see down there, but there's some more dummies down there bringing some more up. It's flooded. Goes down fairways. Probably about 50 feet down there, I guess, to that low. And we've kept a couple little bridges in there. Or pillars, like a vertical pillar, I guess. A horizontal pillar to hold the back up there, or the ribs up a little. So we're seeing some sulfides in here. And uh, yeah, they did quite a bit of work to keep the keep the back uh, from falling on anyone. Looks like it's a pretty big stope up there, an unsupported stope. So they had to fix it up for the tourists, I guess. And chase these guys down to the next station. So everyone's got to wear a hard hat. It's just pretty low in here, because as you can see, I just hit my head here. <laughs> Two people probably bang their head in here. The hard hats aren't necessary to keep anything from falling on you. That's pretty secure, but keep you from hitting your head. It's actually pretty dark in here without uh, any light. Looks kind of cool. The only light that's on right now is just a camera light. Makes it look pretty neat though. I don't know how good quality the filming will be with that little bit of light. A little bit of fractured rock in here. But false floor here above us. I'm continue on. Well, I'll never find a nicer mine to walk through than this one. <laughs> I guess that's why we pay the big bucks, 100 pesos, to get in here. So, uh, not that's not much. It's a, about eight bucks or so, I guess. Well, six dollars. Yeah. Good value for six dollars. Got a kind of a neat little cage here that they must have used to haul miners up and down. That's kind of cool. Sort of an elevator thing. You can see a little better. Pretty simple, but it's a good way to haul miners up and down. And then they just would have pulled it with a rope. And probably would have been fairly simple to let people down. And a bit of ways up. There's some stalls in there. Oh, I got some of these layers of ore in here. Some band of some kind of ore there. And some pyrites in there. And then there's the rest of the tour down there. You can see a miner there. And you can hear the water run a little bit there into the flooded sections of the bowl. This is the main hall level, so. They must have, uh, as far as I know, they must have brought all that ore up to this level. Now, this is probably the oldest ore cart I'll ever see. It looks like, I don't know if it's, those wheels almost look like they could have been original. Looks like a chariot wheels off a Roman carriage or something. Pretty cool. I don't know how they would have pulled that by a, a mule or something, I guess. Cool display there, huh? Mm. 
Well, that probably shows the black lung that you get from breathing. All the freaking dust in from these lungs, eh? Yeah, I don't even know if they went up or down. There's some pretty good old ore carts there. We might have lost our crew. We didn't really pay any attention if they went up or down. Probably just goes around in a circle anyhow. So this wasn't originally a level, but it is now. Pretty skinny pillar up there. Yeah, we're just in the mid part of this uh, stope here. It's really very similar to you know many mines that we've toured before. Other than some of the artifacts, which are pretty unique and displays. And there we go. So, there we got some canaries in a cage. So, I don't think they would use them here. That would be something they use in a coal mine. It's not something that's commonly used in hard rock mines. Unless they had some specific issues with that. And there's some hand steel and some tools there. Oh, well, there's a teapot. It's the uh, same as I got my museum, eh? it's a, the teapot, the old teapot lamp. Yeah. Well, that's kind of a strange, that's an electric tugger, which I had never seen before. Far more common to see the, the air powered tuggers. So that would probably, it's a pretty simple but effective winch, you know, two guys. Could hold a lot of war up and down there in a day. And there's electric winch. There's the track switch. And uh, our cart. Hope guys pushing some more. Yeah, well, if any of you guys, uh, you know, are regular fans of the show and you think, oh, that's really cool, but it'd be too checking to go in a mine, doing this one, then we get any safer than this. Zacatecas, Mexico. There's some pretty cool lamps. There's a teapot and some other older lamps. Well, that's a, so that's a kind of interesting way that, uh, you know, like a little swing. That, uh, yeah, I'm sure they would use that with hand steel um, you know, to just clean up anything along the edges that got left. In there, you can still see some green there for the copper. So this mine first started in the late 1500s from the very top level, and it shut down in 1960. So, there's another, some carts that they have here, some old stuff. And this is actually a picture of some flotation cells at another mine, not from here. And then we have a, an ore cart here. Pretty old cart, that one. Yeah. Well, so this is where the explosives would have been kept. Pogoro explosives. Keep the keep out. Stay out. So you know, this is one of the very few places that we've seen um, a carbide lamp on a helmet. Usually they have the other type that you carry. So these are the ones that we have. So this level is the number four level, I guess there's seven levels all together. But, uh, they're all done, they only have the mine tour on this level and one that was a little bit below that. So we're going to go up to the top level. The bottom levels, there was other levels but uh, they sealed them off. They just do an awesome job here with all these displays. This is the, I guess the, I don't know where it is. The, Paymaster, I guess, that pays all the guys out there, and uh, the book there. And uh, this is where the tags are. They have that tag system where you take a tag to work with you, and you put it back on the board and you're gone. And if at the end of the day there's any blank spots and they know they're missing someone. Canteens and lunch boxes, helmets, carbide lamps, 
Agua means water in Spanish, and this is kind of a little place where they hung their gear, I guess, to dry up for the next shift. Oh, and there's a canary, but you know, you know, they don't use canaries in hard rock mines, you know, it's just there for dramatic purposes. That's just a coal mine thing. And uh, cool little statues of miners and stuff that they got here. And these are, it says carbide, but I don't know. Carbide normally come in them drums like that. Maybe it did here. Look at the big dynamite boxes. 22 kilograms, and they may be a lot freaking heavier than that. That's like 50 pounds. There's no way that'd be 22 kilograms. I don't know. Looks a lot heavier than that to me. There's the hand steel and a whole bunch of axes. And hand steels, and there's a really neat blasting machine there. I love that blasting machine. And some more hand steels there. Oh, and hey, there's my backpack and my hard hat that I'm supposed to be wearing. They're really good to me here. They just stay behind, film as long as you want, take your time, look through all this shit. So this mine's very similar to mines you see in Canada that we've explored many places, but they've done just such a great job in trying to explain how the mine operated and, and uh, lots of artifacts and stuff like that too. Well, we're carrying on. We went up the elevator and there's another level here. So we've gone up this other level and we're going to have a poke around here and see what we can find here. The back's pretty rough here. You know, it's, you can see that too many places where it's that rough. But, I don't know if there's two more levels that we can get at or what. You know, there's an elevator there. I rolled that elevator up here, some timbering here. Obviously a pretty new construction. Holding the back up. I'm not sure if that's really necessary, if it's for illustration. Doesn't matter. Oh, there's a big air door here, lots of air moving through here. Yeah. There's some copper up there. Oh wow. All kinds of cool things here. There's an elevator that they got set up here. Oh, that's where the other elevator went to. Oh, and we have video surveillance here too, so, so they're keeping an eye on us. So you definitely want to be on your best behavior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, uh, good airflow in here. Yeah, it's supposed to be about 600 meters to get out, so well, that's kind of cool. You can just walk along at your own pace. And, oh, there's an old method of uh, crushing ore down. Pretty colorful looking stopes in here. You got some sulfides in here and a bit of iron ore. A little bit of quartz in there. Hmm. There's some hand steel there. The miner having a little siesta. Must have made, uh, oh, that's kind of cool. Gourds, eh? Just use a corn cob for a plug. The whole water, and that's been pretty, that's pretty neat. Cheap way to make a jug. Back in the old days, there's some more mine carts, hand steel. Yeah, I don't know which would be the nastier job, having to swing that sledgehammer or hold the steel. <laughs> I guess they probably trade it off. They have pretty colorful uh, sulfites up there. And we got another level up there with a false floor. Mm. Now we'll continue along this foot wall. Uh, and there's another little drawing here of, looks like a shaft, an inclined shaft. Kind of like that we've seen up the HB mine. Oh, the Remac, I mean, the Remac have those 55 degree inclined shafts, just like that. Yeah, so this mine was open from 10 till 5, but uh, we got in here at noon. We're not going to be in here five hours today. <laughs> Man, what an incredible job they did, you know. This is a pretty good mine, similar to the ones that we see in Canada, but uh, they've done, done just an excellent job making it safe for the public and uh, actually having the balls to let people go in here. 
They're so paranoid in Canada about letting anyone go on into a mine for, I don't know why. They all say it's about the liability. You're only liable for something if you do something wrong. <laughs> Pretty dark in here without the lights. That's why you need a hard hat, I guess. You'd end up banging your head if you didn't have a light, I'm sure. But not much chance of banging your head if you can see. Yeah, oh, see, there's those are the old air pumps they would have had, eh? The big bellows to pump air into the mine. Dynamite, a dynamita. Spanish for dynamite, no doubt. Oh, we've got a case of uh, explosives here. Oh, uh, maybe we can take one of these for a souvenir. No, oh, they're pretty solid. <laughs> I'm sure it's not real dynamite, not like what we find. There's a whole mock up of an old charge generator. And we're looking back down onto the flooded section down there. They got a bit of a light there, so you can kind of see it pretty good. Well, it's an interesting wheel. I'm not really sure what it would have been used for. 